Yes, yes, this is here. This is finally making landfall. The 199 MBS Jayco J Feather here at Halid RV. This has been the single most requested unit I've ever seen in my history. Everybody and their brother going, Josh, when are you gonna get it? When am I gonna get a video? Well, we finally got it here today and I am not gonna let a few raindrops stop me. I'm gonna be tucked under this umbrella. I'm gonna get some wet feet and we are gonna make it happen. This thing is built to impress. We've got double Asdell walls, Goodyear Wrangler tires, which is a step even above Goodyear Endurance that everybody likes. Uh, something that's incredibly uncommon in this class is an enclosed underbelly available with optional tank heaters. There's an optional solar package. You see that black stone uh, outside camp kitchen griddle station? She has got a Murphy bed, a big dinette slide. It has no carpet, cargo bunkhouse, and a partridge in a pear tree. It is a little bit bigger, a little bit heavier, and has a lot more equipment than almost anything else in this class. That does lend itself to a heavier weight tag at 4,785 pounds dry weight, which is going to be more than a lot of people would have expected. But this was not designed to be the absolute lightest weight thing out there. This is designed to be somebody who's like, okay, look, I want all the features of like a 6,000, 6,500 pound uh, bunkhouse camper but I want it in something that is small, compact, towable, lightweight. Maybe I've got like a, a 5,500 pound and up uh, SUV tow package. That's where this one comes in right here. And hang with me, because I'm gonna give you the highs and the lows. Like I said, I'm gonna point out the things that are awesome, point out the things that maybe you need to consider. Always try to represent it fairly. And if you appreciate that, hit that subscribe button. And since this is a brand new model, please, uh, leave me some feedback. Let me know what would you change given the opportunity and what do you love about it? Now I've talked enough, let's get going. And the first thing that kind of occurred to me when I stepped in here is that this is a smaller trailer. It doesn't feel smaller when we get inside. The big dinette is helping. That Murphy bed we're going to look at is helping. But one of the other things that's really doing us a heck of a favor here is the Jayco Modern Farmhouse Decor, giving us those lighter and brighter colors. Now, I don't use tricky fisheye camera lenses to distort the sense of space. Like, I get that. It's a very cool looking, very impressive looking shot. But I also feel it's kind of a little bit deceptive to represent things that way. And I try to use flat angle lenses to give you the clearest, most reasonable uh, look at this possible. Up top here, obviously, we've got our air conditioner. But one of the other things that really helps these is all of our J feathers have that one of those XL uh, vent fans up top there in the ceiling. So if you want to leave all these sliding uh, max breeze windows open, you can. Now, we're sitting in the dinette currently. And uh, if you're looking at it, like if you're lounged across the sofa or if you're in bed at night, that's actually a very good angle to watch TV, but not so much here from the dinette. The good news is that uh, that TV pivots around and it can do a little bit of anything that you need it to. to uh, in a sense, I think you could even watch some uh, toilet TV on it. <laughs> now what's cool is this is a Furion TV and soundbar combo. Very space efficient thing. But if you get down here, you can actually see like the built-in soundbar on that guy, which is kind of handy. That is also 12 volt, uh, which lends itself to the off-grid capability of this camp right here. And we'll talk more about that as we uh, dive into their uh, solar packages and whatnot. Up front here, though, this uh, bedding arrangement right here, this is one of the things that absolutely makes this floor plan work so, so well. But before we deploy the bed, I actually want to start down here where you see there's some crazy stuff going on under this sofa. And when you start peeling into stuff like this, you start realizing that between the wider body, the heavier roof construction, all of the extra cabinetry, and the little odds and ends that Jayco has included in this all over the place, that's where that extra weight comes from. This is certainly not the lightest weight little camper you're going to find out there. It absolutely carries the weight of a lot of tandem axle trailers but it also carries the equipment package of a lot of tandem axle trailers while getting into a smaller size range. And that's really what this one's doing for us right here. It's not so much this one doesn't save us uh, a ton of weight. It's just that this one brings us big RV features into a smaller towing length that uh, a lot of tow package SUVs are going to handle a lot more easily. Like that full overhead cabinet space right there uh, in this slightly wider body, seven and a half foot wide package. All that stuff adds up. But there's one other hidden little detail here. If we take a peek just down below that uh, sofa, you see there's actually a little uh, portable picnic table included with this. So if you're not you know, wanting to use those side stands or if you wanna take a picnic table outside, <laughs> it's kind of the, uh, it's like the little camper that could. It just keeps going and going and going. 
I want to take a second to show you the Murphy bed setup, but again, a couple little details here. And I'd almost like some feedback on this. It almost feels sometimes like, I, I feel like Jacob doesn't know when to stop sometimes. They only know how to do too much. It's what they're really good at is always take, just cranking it up to 11. But these little removable side stands over here, it is nice. They slot right into these really heavy duty cu uh, cup holders, by the way. You could have a dinner plate, you could sit here on like a little Surface Pro or tablet or whatever, you know. I could see that working. Like, I could see the TV entertaining some people over here by the dining while I'm doing my own thing or perhaps over here because there are two of them, one on for each side. But you can also just get them out of the way. But when you already have nice heavy duty side stands with cup holders built in, which by the way, you don't lose your cup holder. This also still has a cup holder when you install it in the cup holder. It's like cupception. Basically, I'm just going to get this out of the way for demo's sake, pardon me. I just, I don't know that it's needed, but it is kind of cool at the same time. Um, so while I'm setting up this Murphy bed here, what's nice about this is it's, it's just about as quick and simple as it gets. There's just a quick little release latch over here. And what's awesome about this is you don't got to be like Magnus for Magnus in the world's strongest man. You just, it's, it's not hard. It just click locks into place. One hand is all it takes, basically. So we just flick that, drop that down. This is a bifold mattress. That is kind of necessary to make this happen. So if you're looking at mattress replacements, or at least a foam topper, kind of keep that in mind. Foam toppers are easy because you can just roll those up. A mattress replacement, you're going to have to be a little more specialized. Now, just to show you how it is, normally I take my shoes off. We are still new in the plastic. Um, it is kind of wet everywhere. You know when you get, like, soggy toes when you step in something wet? I just don't feel like dealing with it right now. But just to give you an idea of the sizing of the mattress, I'm a pretty big dude. I got my dad bod over here. There's room enough for two people on this. My wife and I could make do very easily for a weekend, extended weekend, couple weeks with my daughter, maybe a friend over there in the double bunks. We've also got the dinette that can fold down into additional sleeping. It's not bad. There's a lot of space here. Putting it away is about as simple and easy as it gets. And there you go. And it's kind of cool. It's cool to see this in a more premium series trailer. Um, the, the first time I ever saw a layout like this, who originated this floor plan is the Wildwood 178 BHSK. It is a great simpler series travel trailer that works very well for casual campers like me. But nobody made it in a premium, higher level, more equipment package. Jayco originally had four floor plans for the J Feather Micro. I called them and said, there's one more you have to have. You got to build this and you got to Jayco the crap out of it. And they did, and we're here. Oh, by the way, um, they also have a little uh, privacy curtain that kind of hides out of the way here. I don't want to rip it on the wall, grab the Velcro. So, you know, unlike a lot of little things like this, if you want to privatize the bed, you can. And now with some backlighting behind me, you're probably seeing my silhouette. But if I go ahead and kill those, you're probably not able to see a whole heck of a lot back here. So it actually does provide some decent privacy. And by the way, the little, uh, the table that hides under that sofa makes for one heck of a good camera stand. <laughs> I want to get you a better look at these side stands. You can see there's household and USB plugs on both sides of them. Again, you got the cup holders, which can be those, um, uh, swing out table mounts, whatever you want to call it. And again, all of the window coverage in this thing. They did give us all the windows they could. There aren't a whole lot of windows, obviously, on the door side of the RV. It's just kind of a necessity of this floor plan. If you want that big slide, you can't just flip-flop it because it would overlap with the entry door. Another thing I want to show you here, we're completely carpetless, and they did give us as much storage as they could under the dinette. Now, you notice over here we've got a door. It doesn't go all the way to the exterior slide wall, though, because that rear bench has storage below it. But you might know, you look at this, you go, ah. They cheaped out. They only gave me one baggage door. That's not the case. Think of all of the other things, all the over-the-top things that we've already talked about here on this RV, and, and you're going to hear a whole lot more as we go. They didn't just decide to cheap out by removing one baggage door that doesn't cost a lot. There's actually no storage under there, and you will see that with the funky shape of the slide out when we go outside. That's a technical term, by the way. I know it looks like the slide is all one piece that is all one size, like a rectangle like you normally are, but there's actually a chunk cut out of it right there for the wheel well, and you'll see that again when we go outdoors. Now, uh, all the windows, of course, have some really heavy, uh, you know, like kind of blackout pleated style shades. We already talked about the, the AC and that big vent fan up top, but just while we're sitting here, give you a good point of view when you're sitting on the sofa. I want to look at this guy real quick. This 
is our GoPower solar charge controller right here. It is uh, 30 amp, so that does mean it's expandable. When we get up to the roof, you'll see that that is paired with a 190 watt solar panel. And you can actually get uh, a second one of those uh, to work with that charge controller before you need to worry about changing out any other hardware, which is actually really, really cool. Now, uh, over here, one of the things that we're looking at is the larger optional 8.7 cubic foot 12 volt DC compressor fridge. That gives us the maximum storage, uh, well, cold storage that is available on this model currently. I do want to mention there is a convection microwave oven. At the time of this filming, there is no gas oven option. But I think Jayco suspected people might want one eventually because if you notice, they left a lot of space below that stovetop. So leave some feedback on this video, like how would you want one of these equipped? Because the way we're looking at it today is not the only way that it's available. I like that uh, big open pocket for like pots or pans or something below the sink. What is nice though, this floor plan, it is limited for storage capacity. So having all that extra drawer space below where the, uh, where the oven could be, even though it's not available at this time, I think it's actually very valuable. I think this is a floor plan where sticking with the, uh, the, the, the current arrangement that we're looking at actually works pretty nicely for a lot of folks. Now that is the conven uh, conventional style microwave. We also have a convection microwave available. That is hard to say without juggling up and I already have enough problems as it is getting my words out. Now the interesting thing on this refrigerator, it's not taller or wider than the standard two-way fridge. It's just deeper. Because it's 12 volt only, they have the ability to make the shelves much, much deeper, which is where that extra two point something or other cubic foot of storage comes from. And either way, you'll always get that big drawer right down there below the refrigerator. Now, as we move back here, you see this does have a cargo bunk arrangement, which is really handy because the, the length of this, you'll see when we close the slide in just a minute here, I will get that closed for you. That stays wide open. So if you've got some long stuff you need to load in there, you've got a good place for it. Uh, Jayco doing Jayco things. Double bunks are rated for 300 pounds per sleeping space. So these are 600 pound rated bunks, which is uh, pretty crazy. I like that little handle there to get you to the uh, upper bed. The windows for the bunks uh, open. The upper and lower bunks both have a handy little kind of foam pocket up there. Some USB plugs, some household receptacles, a little place to be able to slot some things. And again, uh, both windows open. You might notice that windows on the rear wall. That's because if the camp kitchen door is open over here, it would block the window there. So they go ahead and move the position. And I wanted to uh, leave this flipped up so you could see even where you're not looking. You're looking at plywood, like the roof. It's plywood. Everything Jayco does, they, they, they just tend to use better materials. Like they're using bigger, thicker lumber, basically, whatever you want to call it, wood, supports. That's why this thing is not the lightest thing out there. It's it's lighter than some of the other Jayco stuff for sure. It's not the lightest thing in the market. They're using double thickness mattresses, for instance. Like everything they do is just a little bit bigger, a little cut above. Now, pardon me real quick. I need to ask just a little bit of your understanding. It is raining today and I didn't want to just leave my umbrella sloshed around the floor. So I put it in the sink because I figured that's a good place to be able to put some wet stuff, you know. Now, the, the bathroom here is another area where this really shines as compared to a lot of other smaller trailers. And where it really highlights, I love that window. I love a big bathroom window like that. I don't even know why. Because I'm going to leave the shade drawn. Personally, I'm going to keep that shade drawn all the time. But it looks sharp to me. A little spot there to be able to uh, hang a towel. But this has a, a taller ceiling than a lot of little campers. Not all. Some. It is a full six and a half foot interior height in here. And where that makes a difference is when you're getting here into the shower. Now, a tall guy like me, I am definitely going to need to keep my head in the skylight. We're doing this all in real time here. But if I'm standing in this shower, I, I can do so without having to duck. And I'm gonna try to not make you motion sick and spin you around. So if I'm standing at the position of the shower head, I can actually get myself in here and, uh, you know, I, I can stand straight up. I can ET phone home. My head's definitely in the bubble. But thankfully, that's standard. There are some companies that have uh, six and a half foot tall ceilings like this, but their ceilings uh, or their showers uh, either don't have a standard skylight or it's uh, just not available at all. Now, the other thing I wanna do, as long as we're pointing at the, the, the camera on me here, I'm gonna go ahead and just sit on the toilet, give you an idea of how much space there is in here. My legs are not stretched out like crazy, but it's enough. Again, the bed is big enough. The bathroom is big enough. 
that's the whole point of this camper is to 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 give it as much as they possibly could in as compact of a space as they possibly could and they certainly went nuts like let me flip this around like look at this right here um this is the view from the toilet by the way guys this is you you could watch toilet tv she's toilet tv certified yes but look at how many ceiling lights are through here lighting and windows at a ton of cost to an rv this is a loaded premium level trailer it's just in a smaller package it does weigh more than a lot of other single axles but it weighs less than a lot of tandem axles this is an in-betweener if that makes sense but i tell you where else they nailed it and that is travel mode because with that slide closed not only can you like fully access the rv and walk through here very easily not only can we get to the bunks and the bathroom absolutely no problem because there's more than enough room for that door to swing around but if i do swing you around this is one of the very few little campers like this i've seen where you can still utilize the bed even with the slide out uh, retracted, so you can still deploy the bed even the slide's not deployed. That is a very hard thing to find in a small camper market like this. And I think that that's going to be a, uh, a significant like travel factor for a lot of people. Man, there's just something about this one, just the general shape and the size, everything about it looks really good. Now these are seven and a half wide uh, versus like a common seven foot wide, which is where they have the extra room for those double bunks. It certainly adds a little bit of weight. And again, this was not made to be the lightest little thing out there. It was made to be one of the most heavily equipped, compact campers you could possibly find. And I'm not sure there's a better example of that than what they're doing here in their camp kitchen. Um, everything is all galvanized rolled steel. You see that handy little drawer out there. We've got some handy outlets, um, USB plugs as well. There's lights even inside the little camp kitchen so you can see what you're doing. We got dad's medicine cabinet there for the barley pop and the bottled water. And of course, we got ourselves a propane cooker hooker for that 17 inch black stone griddle over here. But what is cool is not just that they're using the true black stone name, but the, uh, the little wing out table that is installed uh, that you, well, it comes with it in the J port, which is that nice little almost like side receiver hitch that is on this thing, which that thing is ridiculously strong, by the way. I've actually, uh, I've got some photos of two grown men standing on that thing, holding one of those griddles without issue. There's a whole world of accessories out there that can go into this, like uh, outside trash cans and all sorts of things. But I think this griddle is probably going to be your most common uh, thing you're going to put into it. Now, it's neat is the little table that that griddle sits on. You see those little holes right there? That's actually what kind of holds the griddle in place because the griddle is not bolted to it. Those feet that you could, if you want to move the griddle around, you want to do some free floating with it, if you want to use it at home, you don't just have to use it with the camper. I can see myself on my back, uh, you know, uh, porch doing this kind of stuff right here, grilling it up for the family. Oh, my wife would be. She's the grill master. I'm just, I, uh, I get a little too like ADHD and like, and I forget stuff, you know. Anyway, but you could also get a larger 22 inch griddle. That's what those little hole slots are there for. Now you'll see that everything has magnet holdbacks, like all of our baggage doors for just easy, easy access here. And I wanna back up a little bit, let you check out the patio space on this one. With this being the biggest of the J feathers, that means that it does have the greatest of the patio space available. That's an anti-slam entry door. So, you know, it's not gonna go banging against the awning arm if it's opened in the wind right there. These are also easy tilt awning arms. So on a drizzly, cruddy rainy day like today if you want to come outside you could just simply uh tug one of those arms down a little bit and uh angle some runoff where and how you want it which is a nice little feature led lights below the awning oh and if you leave the awning arms cranked and go to close it it doesn't break these are solera awning arms and they uh, basically readjust themselves Got the bigger handle for some easy come and go here. Triple step, more ride, stable step. That should be another indication of why this does weigh a little bit more. This is on a bigger, taller, thicker, heavier, stronger chassis. And they had to put on a, uh, a heavier, larger uh, axle rated for more weight to carry the you know heavier base weight of this camper that uh, you just don't always see in a smaller segment like this. So someone's gonna go, how could one axle possibly hold that weight? Well, they make axles that go up to like 8,000 pounds each, you know? So they just had to make sure they put an appropriately sized axle on it, and thankfully they have accomplished that. Now, one of the other things I wanted to show you here is that front storage compartment, and we'll get there in just a second. 
but I also wanted to show you how all the camp kitchen stuff, including all the griddle space, can basically all self-store right here inside the camp kitchen. Uh, if I'm being picky, the only thing I would like to see in here is like some kind of way to be able to strap that griddle down just so that it doesn't uh, jiggle around in transit. But that's an easy thing that even a, a guy like me who's not good with tools could manage. So it doesn't have to eat up any of this front big pass-through space. And that is something that they did very, very well on here. Uh, they kind of took some notes from the Big Brother uh, White Hawk Murphy beds with this design, which is really evident, by the way, if you're familiar with White Hawk Murphy beds, they have that, you know, those drawers and that table underneath. But that big full pass-through compartment right here, that is something a lot of Murphy bed models don't have. And look at how nicely finished it is. You just don't see anything raw or exposed. Now, all of that adds up to a little bit more weight. Again, this is made to be detailed, not like super duper feathery light. But even when she's not all blasted wide open, all the camp kitchen, the awning and everything, still just has a dynamite look about it. Now, uh, again, a bigger trailer feature, double propane tanks with an auto changeover regulator. That's something little campers don't often have. Uh, the uh, little Nerf bar brush guards that you're seeing at the bottom there too. That's another uh, very uncommon, almost signature quality of these. And I'm always open to feedback on those. I think the idea is that a trailer like this kind of appeals to somebody who, who might go a little bit more out of the parks and kind of forge their own path a little bit. And that's where these are kind of here for, uh, to help kind of, you know, keep the brush from scarring and dragging up against the side of your trailer. Now, if you're noticing, we've also got a couple big baggage doors over here on this side. Once again, everything magnetic holdback for easy access, and it is a true pass-through. It actually wraps all the way around that sofa and gives us easy access to a simple battery disconnect so that when the RV's in storage, you know, you don't end up uh, bleeding the battery dry or anything like that. And again, we do have easy access to storage behind that U dinette, so you don't have to necessarily go tearing apart the entire dinette to get to everything every time. Now, I'm chopping up my footage a little more than normal because of the weather, so I just don't want it to get, you know, rainy inside here. But it's also a good way to showcase the fully sealed piano hinges on these big baggage doors so that, uh, you know, if you live in an area like we do here in the Midwest where uh, it can rain and then freeze, water can get into those big hinges if they're exposed and freeze and spring them, and then they make those terrible creaky sounds, and now you don't got to worry about that. You might have noticed it's not just rear camera ready, it's side camera ready. And like all Jayco laminated trailers, actually all Jayco travel trailers and fifth wheels, uh, uh, period, it has the J-Smart safety lighting system. So uh, you've got reverse lighting so you can see if you're backing into a space or, uh, you know, uh, if uh, a spotter needs to make sure they're not getting run over, they can visibly see that you've shifted into reverse. Uh, we've also got the turn signal lighting. So you flip on your left-hand blinker to change lanes and other drivers can see that. Notice that very irregular slide-out system right there. Uh, that is why the one bench has storage under it that has a storage door, but the other one does not because it, they actually had to, uh, like this bench is over this wheel well right here. Notice two of the little kind of ground effect-ish sort of accent lighting under there. Again, those are Goodyear Wrangler tires, a step above even the Goodyear Endurance. Those are like truck tires, basically. Full black tank flush, full outside utility shower. All of our sewer stuff, nice and high off the ground where you're not gonna you know, tear it off. And that's where that bigger, taller, maybe heavier chassis comes into play. You may also notice a place where you can keep your sewer hose away from everything else, even despite the fact that this does have some pretty good uh, outside storage as compared to most little things out there. If I'm being picky, I would like that spare tire mounted down a little bit lower, but I also understand why it isn't. If it was down lower, it could potentially block that taillight, which is a major highway safety issue. Um, additionally, with that heavier 300 pound rated removable rear ladder, I just don't know that there was anywhere else they could put it. Like you see, you got a water heater, you got a window. I think on this model, they did the best they could. So while I would prefer that tire to be a little lower, I also fully understand it and I'm not really going to criticize them for it. Now, I'm not gonna lie. I got wet feet stomping around out here. I just stepped into a nice puddle. I'm not wearing like rain shoes today. I failed to check the weather report, but I'm not gonna let that stop me from at least giving you a good look at the roof here. I'm probably not gonna spend a lot of time up there, but I hope you appreciate the extra efforts that we're willing to go for you here at Halet RV because there's some really good stuff up there and I, I don't want you to go this far and not get to see the whole thing. 
And thankfully, it's actually not too slippery up here. I'm not feeling real scared because you remember, this roof is actually textured so that if you are up here doing a little bit of cleaning, you know, it's gonna have some grip. Now we got a little bit of shipping dust on the roof and you can see how that's all surface level and coming right off here. Before you take your RV home from Halid RV, by the way, we go through and actually do a nice cleaning on it, uh, top to bottom, inside and out. Uh, I know it sounds dumb to talk about that, but you might not realize not every place does that, at least at no additional charge. Now you see that roof cargo rack that we've got mounted up here? Those things are really cool because they can, uh, you, you could use that for, you know, bike racks, kayaks, there's cargo pods you could put up here. And with this being Jayco's Magnum Trust roof system, where, uh, where uh, a lot of that extra weight is actually coming from uh, on the camper, it's rated for more weight. It can handle it up here. Now, this is optional, but that 190 watt solar package plus the charge controller that you saw inside, that right there is a great way to extend your camping. I am not saying that that will give you 100% all you want in definite use of everything on this RV, including that 12 volt fridge while you're off grid. What I'm saying is this is a good way to extend your use of the RV for a pretty reasonable period. Now, how long really depends on how you use the RV and everything that you pour into it. But what's neat is that nice wide open space over here. If you wanted to, you could add another of those 190 watt panels and tie it into this because it is a system that can scale up to 380 watts. There's one more thing I want to mention to you here because I actually was curious about it myself and I just got off the phone from my factory contact and I said, hey, that 199 came in. It looks awesome, but you screwed up your backup camera prep. Uh, you're not going to see anything. Your vision's going to be obscured between those ladder rungs if you put a ladder into it or a camera into it. Yeah, put a ladder in the whatever. You get what I mean. They said, you know what? We wondered the same thing and we tested it and we did have to move it, but we made sure that if you do install a Furion camera in that backup uh, housing right there, that it will actually peek through those ladder rungs and it won't be obstructed. So that was good to know. So what do you think, ladies and gentlemen? Give me your feedback. Like I said, let me know what would you like to see different and what do you love about it? And if you appreciate what we're doing here, make sure you take a chance to hit that subscribe button, like the video here. And when you're ready, we'd love the opportunity to put your name on one of these here at Halid RV of Coldwater, Michigan. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and I'm going to go dry out now, everyone. Mm -hmm.